I heard recently there is a new killer. I was surprised when I first heard it for the first time. I first thought I was a crazy fan of Jet the Killer because of her appearance, but after doing a thorough investigation of her, I discovered that it was far worse than a monster. Things didn't go went well after that. I read it from a local newspaper. Strange and unexplained murders have increased for several months. They had investigated that this the suspect the suspect was a killer. No shit, honey. The investigation found a witness who said that it was not one killer, but two killers. He said that both of them are attacking different cities. It is still unknown if they are working together or separately, but luckily I was able to find another witness from the hospital. He told me what happened. Here's what the witness said. It happened one night, the guy narrates. I was walking from my wor- my work to home. I'm rereading that because that's fucking stupid. I was walking from my work to home and I was alone in the streets. Then I had decided to take a shortcut because I, I want to get home quickly. But I, but it was a big mistake. When I was already halfway to my home, I began to feel that I was being watched and I heard footsteps. I quickly turned... I turned quickly making sure that a thief was not following me, but I found nothing, so I just thought that it was just my imagination. I continued walking, but the feeling of being watched became stronger, and I heard footsteps close. I noticed something approaching then. Suddenly, I saw a black-haired girl with a magenta streak in her hair. She looks like she's 16 or 17, though her face did not look human. Her skin was very pale, and her eyes looked at me with thirst for blood. She had eyes that are very wide with a strange, disturbing look. Her smile was so dark. I was afraid. I stood still for a moment. I felt great fear running through my body. Did you? Did you really? She didn't say a word. She just stood there for what seemed an eternity. And finally, the girl just gave a speech she made. What? (laughs) She didn't say, say any word. She just stood there for what seemed an eternity, and finally the girl just gave a speech as she moved her head to one side in a way that a psychopath would. I can't move my head to crack my neck, what the hell? I immediately felt nervous. Go to sleep, my prince. Oh yeah, I forgot that was her shitty saying. Then I quickly ran to the opposite direction. I ran as fast as I could. I ran as fast as I can, but it was not enough as she was too fast. Then I suddenly felt felt her dark presence, followed by a sharp stab through my arm. I fell to the ground with a groan of pain. Then she released a hysterical laugh. She used her knife and she stabbed into my shoulder. She managed to slice off my shirt, making my stomach bleed, making my stomach bleeding. But quickly, but luckily, I heard the voice of a policeman who had come. He was holding a gun, but the girl just smiled to it and the police fired several bullets in her direction. But the girl avoided it rapidly, and she ran quickly while laughing. I saw her climbing on one of the houses, then disappeared. I was never able to forget that face, let alone that laugh. After my interview with him, the young man was found dead in his house. His body was chopped into pieces. It was full of blood everywhere. In the room where the body was found, in the room where the body was found on the wall was found written with blood that said, "You didn't go to sleep, my prince." This is the origin story. Nita Hopkins is an 11-year-old who transferred to a new school so that she could be closer to home. One Sunday morning, a date... I mean, again... One Sunday morning, a day before her first day of school, she woke up and went to the bathroom to brush her teeth. She went back to her room and took her laptop to connect to the Wi-Fi. Nina was not the type of girl to be cheerful. She was not the type of girl that would open the window and let the light into her room and do something productive. No, she just enjoyed sitting down to watch animes or listen to music like rock, J-pop, or K-pop, playing video games, or just playing guitar. So she liked to be herself and loved her family and friends. Oh, really? Then why she, the fuck she become a killer? Uh, but this time... But this time, she did not want to do any of those things that is considered normal. This time, she wanted to be... This time, she wanted to read Jeff the Killer Creepypasta for the thousandth time. Is that right? Yeah, that's right. She adored him. It was her favorite. And it's the... And no wonder, both of these are shit. She felt a strange attraction to him. She had an admiration for him more than anything. A fake... 
creepypasta. Slenderman! Every time she read it, she felt a strange desire. But she didn't know why she enjoyed the strange desire, because she's probably 14 and probably hormones and shit. When she started to read it, the door suddenly opened. She quickly saw her little brother Chris and his beautiful green eyes. Nina thinks Chris is her prince. Ew. She loved calling her brother Prince because it would... Because when she was little, her mother would always tell her fairy tales about... Damn it. Her mother would always tell her fairy tales when it's bedtime. She liked this type of story, and she thinks the prince and her fairy tale looked like her little brother Chris. What story are you thinking of? Chris had dark black hair, fair skin, and light green eyes, like his late father. However, Nina had light brown hair, fair skin, and light blue eyes like her mother. Sis, it's time to eat, the child said with an innocent smile. I'm going, my prince. She pinched it. Pinched the cheeks of her bro- little brother. She left the laptop on her bed and went to eat. Making it burn out because fuck that. I'm already so fucking sad. Blech. I'm taking a sip of my drink. This is 16 minutes long. I'll probably make this longer because I keep talking over it and messing up. See, this is so fucking shit. Next morning, Nina and Chris went to school. How old is Chris? Like, little brother, how old is that? I think Jeff was 13, 14? And her, the brother was like a year, maybe two under. It's still undefined. I'll read that later. I keep getting distracted because I want to talk about <laughs> the history of these two, and it's fucking weird. Reading it again. I'm sorry. Next morning, Nina and Chris went to school. Nina got up and dressed in a shirt that is her favorite, and she took her back. What's the shirt look like? I don't fucking know. She felt something strange, like a strange desire. She did a strange little smile that found, formed on her mouth. Suddenly, she heard her mother's voice, and she was in reality again. And she immediately took her back, and she completely ignored what happened. She quickly went downstairs. This reminds me of a middle school paper that half the time... Because I'm even writing a story, and I can tell you, it's always and, 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 like, 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 like. But at the same time, when you're going through it, you have to reread it and be like, hey, we know she's talking, we know she's doing this. You can always say, suddenly, hearing her mother's voice brought her back to reality, which immediately made her take her bag and completely ignore what happened. Taking a bunch of the she's out is so much better and it's just one of those it's like an, it's not a nitpick okay it's trying to better yourself to not have so many words that just make the story 16 minutes long this video is probably gonna be 20 something minutes i don't know i'm still trying to figure this out this is just like the rari with pinky in the brain i'm so i'm so like shocked and appalled by this because this was supposed to be a serious video. That's why I kept saying, fuck shit. And then, now I'm just like, fuck it. This is a raw read. <laughs> Take a sip of my nut drink. Oh, I, I just read like what the mother said. And it literally says, ask the mother. Uh, uh. Okay, get serious. Are you both ready for school? Asked the mother. Yes, they both responded. Well, good luck in school. No. And her mother went back to the kitchen. Okay, bye, Mom. Oh, shit, this is an answer line. Bye, Mom. They both responded. They walk. They walked to the school because Nina thinks taking the bus is annoying. Wait, what? Nina thinks taking a bus is annoying. Oh, I'm sorry. I read that wrong. I thought it was correct for a second. They both went to their... Damn it. They both went to their separate ways. In the classrooms. Nina went to high school while her little brother went to elementary school. attending classes because she thinks it's boring okay then drop out wait you're 14 you can't technically can't drop out yet oops 
When the siblings finished taking classes, they decided to find a quiet place to eat without having to worry that students are playing around them. Okay, so she found a garden behind the school where there are no people, no teachers, no, or even students. They sat and ate, sat and eat. I, I almost said that correctly. They sat and eat, thinking they would have a peaceful breakfast. Wait, this is breakfast? This is breakfast? What? This is breakfast? Hold on. Finish taking classes. Uh, fuck. Why is breakfast? What? But they heard footsteps. Nina looked up and met a girl much older than her. She had black hair. Thanks, sweetheart. Nothing about her matters, I guess. Well, well, what do we have here? New students, announced the girl. My name is Claudia, and I rule at this school. No, you don't. And if you do not obey what I say, you will suffer, she said as she pulled a knife from her jeans. Okay, that took a turn. Then suddenly two guys came out from a nearby tree. They were known as Malcolm and y Yoni. Yoni. I don't know how to say that name. I'm terribly sorry. Yoni? Is it Yoni? Yuni. Is it Yuni? Ah, fucking hell. Nina sat up quickly and stood in front of Chris to protect him. Why is Chris... Why is Chris... Fair point. Why is Chris coming from the high school to elementary? Unless this whole school is small. And that everyone is in the same, like, freaking class. That this could happen. Especially since they're having breakfast. It's not lunch. It's not, like, after school shit. And Jeff, the, I have to keep going back to this. Jeff the Killer, they were waiting for a bus stop. And during that, they had no idea who these kids were. They didn't even, like, probably announce their names. I'll have to read the original story, too. But they literally did not say who they were. They just were like, give me your money. And then, like, shit happened. And even then, I believe that story more that Jeff beat them up than anything. And Nina's over here just like, life is pain. Life is creepy pasta, Jeffy. I'm just fucking, I'm over it. Because I'm already 12 minutes in and I'm like, I don't even know how much I'm in into the story. I'm not even like halfway. Probably like a good beginning of it. Oh, fuck me. Okay, reading because I'm sidetracked. Hey, we don't want any trouble. We just want a peaceful breakfast. How the fuck is this breakfast? Nina clarified. Ah, oh, I see, but you shouldn't be here. This area is ours. Okay, Claudia said as she approached them. That's stupid. You have no right to make us go away from here. Chris said while confronting Claudia, but Uni punched him in the stomach. Chris collapsed, but Nina quickly held him. Why are you punching a kid? Someone call the police. Chris said Nina while holding in her arms. Yeah, I read that right. Fuck you. Well, if you don't want to be next, I recommend you obey and get out of here, cl claimed Claudia while pointing Nina's face with a knife. Pointing Nina's face with a knife. Oh, whatever. Nina did not... Nina did nothing but punch Claudia's face. Claudia collapsed to the ground. Nina took Claudia's knife and stabbed her shoulder. Oh, shit. Okay. Jeff the Killer over here punching because... Near death's brother? <laughs> Nina... P Nina stab girl because... Punch... Chris. Oh, shit. Then Nina gave a strong kick on the crotch of Malcolm. He quickly fell to the ground, but Nina didn't stop. She quickly released several kicks in the boy's face. The boy's face was now full of wounds and blisters. He had a nosebleed. He could have just said... Bruises... Whatever. Uni became frightened immediately when he saw how Nina attacked Claudia and Malcolm. He started to run away from her, but Nina immediately noticed it and quickly ran to him. She used Claudia's knife and quickly lunged it at the boy, targeting his stomach. Nina, she heard the voice of her little brother. Nina immediately turned to him and she got confused as to why her little brother had a very surprised look on his face. Maybe because you fucking stabbed two people and beat the shit out of another? Have you ever thought of that? Most people, when they're trying to defend themselves, they immediately take the one they love and run. I understand those two tried to get you, but, you know, you kind of brought it upon yourself. Both of both parties did, except for Chris. I don't know why Chris even had to say anything because he's a little fucking kid. He most likely would hide behind his sister, but, you know, fuck me. 
Nina decided to let you, Nina go. Oh, apparently she didn't stab him. Excuse me. Nina, Nina decided to let Yuno go and stepped back. She looked at her blood-stained hand. She felt like a monster, but she had to admit that her killer side was extremely good. She turned back to her brother. Oh, you mean your little brother? No. Okay. Her brother was surprised at what he saw. He was shocked at what he saw. Wait. Her brother was surprised at what he saw. He was shocked at what he saw. Nina ran to him and took his arm. Come on, we're not be we can't be here for so long, I said. Wait, you said Who's I? Who is I? You mean Nina? Is it is the author trying to be like, it's me, your boy, skinny piece. What? Then they left then we left the garden. Now it's we I we weren't just from like Nina and Chris to now I and we. Who is Chris? Is Chris someone you know? Oh my god. Like, what? After that, Nina went to wash her hands. She knew she must avoid telling everybody. Any, fuck me. Avoid telling somebody or even mentioning what happened. The little brother Chris thought it was just self defense, and it kind of was. But she knew something else was going on there. She knew that was something stronger and horrible is starting to form inside her. That feeling of being powerful and strong. The need to hurt someone. Actually, just realized something. You left one of them to probably bleed out to death. <laughs> Sorry, Claudia. Did they pass quickly, and when the siblings returned, they sat down to eat with their mother. Well, how is school? Asked the mother with a sweet smile. Chris stayed squat, quiet. Chris stayed quiet and didn't answer the question. Great, Nina commented with a psycho, psychotic smile. Nina went upstairs. After eating and opened her closet, revealing her collection of Jeff the Killer. Oh, dear Lord. She had several Jeff posters, Jeff clothing. Wait, there's no... Well, yeah, technically, it's Jeff clothing, some Jeff notebooks, Jeff dolls, and Jeff stuffed animals. What the fuck do you mean? She took a doll from her closet and put it in her bed. She looked at the doll. She couldn't tell the doll's sinister smile, intimidating her or amusing her. Then she whispered, Jeff, you made me do this. Not really. Kind of was... The other people, I'm, I'm, I'm going to keep reading because I'm still getting pissed off the more I talk about this. We're not even fucking halfway through. Jesus Christ. After the incident, Malcolm and Claudia were found unconscious. No shit. But they didn't find the culprit. They didn't say anything? Or were they afraid? They had, they also had no idea that Nina was the one who did it. An 11 year old. Wait. Hold on. I'm going to. Save that right here, an 11 year old. I'm going back up here to read this. Uh, she is an 11 year old. I thought she was 14. <laughs> okay. 11 year old in high school 11 year old in high school <sighs> What? Oh my fucking god An 11 year old 11 fucking year old In high school Mind you An 11 year An 11 year old in high school I'm getting more pissed off the more I talk continue on so she had that advantage to avoid suspicion and since it happened the first day of school many couldn't tell if Nina was there okay hold on I don't know how this one's gonna work I guess it's part two I guess okay reading along many couldn't tell if Nina was there because a lot of people didn't know much when it comes to new students and it didn't gain much attention. Also, a lot of students didn't know whether it happened on the first day of school or not. One day, Nina opened her locker. She found a note which said, I know what you did, but don't worry. I will not tell anyone. You are very skillful, but also very dangerous. Nina didn't find a signature or anything to identify who wrote the note. But she she had the nose that... Okay, the nose that... Someone saw her, but decided not to reveal her name. It's basically uni. Maybe. Meanwhile, Nina's insanity didn't prove. 
improve, I'm sorry. And she took a knife in the kitchen and hid it in her pocket while sleeping in her room with, with her brother and mother. I thought they slept in separate rooms. Okay, whatever. One day when Chris was playing with his new friend in the park, Nina's mother, whose name is Monica, oh, thank you for telling me this, like, near the middle, noticed that it was getting dark, so she asked her daughter to tell her brother that they were going home now. Nina went to look for her brother, but she didn't saw her little brother. Thank you for that. She became worried, so she went over to Roman went over to Chris's friends and asked them where his little brother was. His little brother. God damn it, people. Make it be mine. They responded that a black-haired girl took him. Nina became very worried and went home to take the knife in her room that she hid. So the mother couldn't find it. So you didn't even tell mom, hey, um, someone abducted my fucking brother. Nina spent a lot of time finding him. She was getting desperate and she and she hopes that her little brother is in a safe place. No, she's been taken by some girl with black hair. Then she saw a car coming. When the door of the car opened when the door of the cars opened, she saw something that was thrown away in the ground. She surprised when it was Chris who was who was in the ground. He just fell through the ground like a glitched out character then she heard laughter coming from the car behind before the car went away nina quickly held chris in his arm in her arms her little brother was brutally beaten and his clothes ripped apart chris what happened she exclaimed while holding the small body of her brother is he gonna die i feel like you eat them nina at me to play okay that, what even a child would be like yeah i was fucking Stabbed, said Chris while trying to speak to Nina. Nina tried to control something that was screaming inside over and over and over and over again. She felt that she needed to control her anger. No shit, honey. Nina quickly took him to the hospital. Nina called her mother and informed her what happened to Chris. Her mother quickly went to the hospital. The doctor told him that he was that he had in, he has internal bleeding and swollen wounds were was found in his body. What? The mother of Nina. Why do you keep saying mom? You already said the mom's name is Monica. Okay, whatever. The mother of Nina began to cry, but Nina just kept crying in a situation. She wanted to avoid hurting someone just for revenge. You kind of know who did it. The next day, Chris was released from the hospital, but the doctor told him to rest for three weeks. I'm gonna get that fucker in the hospital. He's internally bleeding. And he never had surgery to fix it either. <laughs> this is so bad. <sighs> Nina didn't go to school because she wanted to take care of her little brother, even though we don't know what mom does. She would tell Chris some stories, and she would help him by making sure he didn't... That... Making sure he would take some medicines. Medications. I'm so sorry. Nina went to school again after three weeks, I guess. She received a new note which read, I'm sorry about your brother. I hope he recovers. You must never think you're alone. I'll be here. I'll be your friend. Nina suddenly blushed after reading it. She checks the letter again, but she didn't find a signature. Whoever's doing this is like always watching her 24-7 like a stalker. Like not even a stalker. Maybe it's a love interest, but at the same time. I'd be like, who, however big the school is, considering that you're an 11 year old in high school, that there must not be a lot of people that don't know who's putting shit in your locker, okay? So it's, it's fucking weird. Wait, now weeks had passed, god damn it. Weeks had passed and the arrival of the school's picture day arrived. Nina was ready for the picture day. She wore a short black skirt, black stockings with deep red stripes, a sleeveless t-shirt that has black and blue stripes and a bloody and a bloody red ribbon in her long ponytail hair B but she felt that something was missing but something was missing so she looked so she looked in her closet she sees her favorite purple hoodie which reminded her of Jet the Killer hoodie Jet the Killer's hoodie is white so she put it on she went downstairs and sees her little brother waiting in in the stairs, glitched still from whatever happened after that one incident. They both left the house and, be and said goodbye to their mother. The siblings went to school, but this, but this time they went to the bus to avoid meeting the trio again in the road. What if they went on the bus? What if they were on the bus? Then you just fucked yourself. 
they, when they arrived in the school, they saw the trio. Oh, so maybe they had different buses. I don't know. Okay, whatever. <sighs> this shit does not make sense. First, it's three weeks. You could have had, like, how she's feeling in those three weeks looking at her brother. Then you skip to picture day. Now, after this, I'm reading a little further. Now, after this, it's another few days. Like, what is this? Jeff the Killer was more consistent that it was, like, a few days that this shit all happened. Even then, they were the new kids on the block. This doesn't even tell, like, what mom thinks or anything. So, it's like... This is 25 minutes, and I'm already pissed off. Claudia and Malcolm and Uni are walking in the hallway. They seem to be searching for someone. I doubt that. But Nina was aware that the trio are searching for her and her brother, Chris. The siblings decide to stay away from the hallway and must avoid being seen by them. The days pass quickly, but for unfortunately, the trio found them. Nina felt that she was being followed. I wonder why. When she turned her face, when she turned her face to her back, she received a punch in the face and fell to the ground. When she saw her brother, he was caught in the arms of Malcolm. Nina tried to get up, but received another punch in the belly. I thought it was your face, but you know, whatever. She fell back to the ground and she looked up. She saw Claudia. At last, I found you, you bitch, said Claudia while standing in front of Nina. This is my revenge for attacking me last time, she said while pulling a gun. Where the fuck? The knife, the gun, where the fuck? I don't want to fight you, even though I kind of had to last time. Nina said while trying to stand up. Claudia immediately shot Nina using her gun. But Nina quickly reacted to it and she avoided the bullet. Nina stood up and ran as fast as she could to the abandoned house nearby. It was locked inside, even in leaving her brother in the hands to be shot. So she climbed up the stairs. The trio tried to shoot her with a lot of bullets, but they couldn't successfully shoot her. Nina went inside in the bathroom, and she, and she was trapped there. She went. She wanted something to defend her. Didn't you always carry a knife or something stupid like that? Nina! Are you going to stay there? Did you forget about what I did to your little brother? You idiot. Claudia shouted from outside of the abandoned I thought they followed her. Nina Lee Sutton felt a combination of hatred and anger and that need to kill someone. Do you even remember what that need to kill someone was? Nina looked around the room. She saw an iron rod. A twisted smile formed on her face. She took the iron rod and left the room. She quickly dodged the bullets and hit Yoni through the head, releasing a stream of blood. What the fuck? Yoni, no! Some of the blood went on Nina's face, and there... Actually, went on Nina's face, period. And there, dot, dot, dot. Something that changed her. Something broke. Like a thin thread had broken. That thread that divides sanity from insanity. I fucking hate you. Malcolm and Claudia took a few steps back. Nina turned... Nina turned to their direction, showing a psychotic smile, making even Chris shiver with fear. Claudia tried to run along with Malcolm, but Nina hit Claudia in the head. She found out and Malcolm decided to release Chris from his hands, but Nina didn't stop the violence. She attacked Malcolm in the head a lot of times, making his head full of crimson blood. Claudia tried to get the gun, get her gun in the ground, but Nina prevented her. Nina try, pointed the iron rod to Claudia. Nina... Do you feel good? I bet you she feel fucking great. Chris said as she as he felt afraid of his big sister. Nina turned her face to him a little more relaxed with a little more relaxed look. But she didn't stop smiling. Do I feel good? I feel great. My prince, let's go home. I thought she was going to say let's go home. Or Nina said to her brother. Nina and Chris returned home. Her mother saw Nina full of blood. She quickly went to her room. Nina grabbed her laptop and wrote a note. A note that perhaps no one else will ever read. I don't think that's true. It was midnight. The mother of Nina and her brother was sleeping. However, Nina could not sleep, so she got up. She looked in the mirror and smiled in a twisted way. She went, she went downstairs, and she was ready to do the craziest thing in her life. Actually get some mental help and tell the police what she had done. Nina walked... Nina walked into the kitchen. She drank a bottle of vodka and put it on the table. She 
Then she started to search for a bottle of bleach in the cabinets, but she didn't find any bleach. Where's the bleach? Nina groaned as she looked for it. Oh, great. Now she's Jeff the Killer. Oh, cool. Whatever. Regardless, she was always a wannabe. Did you look for these? Nina heard a voice behind her. She turned around and saw... She turned around and she was surprised to find a guy at the entrance of the kitchen. Is it fucking Jeff the Killer? I swear to God if it's Jeff the Killer. He was holding a bottle of bleach. The boy had an extremely pale skin. His hair was black and he was... And he had a disturbing smell. Ah, you... Je- you're Jeff the Killer. Oh, fuck me. I had been observing you for what? How did you manage to get in the school? I don't know how many kids are in here, but how did you manage to get in the fucking school? I've been observing you for a while. I think you've been... I think you have become a killer like me. Ha 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 ha. Jeff said, you're right. So I need that bottle of bleach. And he said, oh, let me help you. Jeff said as he opened the bottle and poured the bleach in, ne- in Nina's head. He just cracked her skull open and put it inside. Then Nina felt another liquid running through her head. Through her head. She looked up and saw Jeff had a matchbox in his hand. Nina smiled at him. What are you waiting for? Do it. Nina said with a passionate smile. Also, in between, do it. It's dot, 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 dot. Okay, whatever. Jeff's grin- Jeff grinned and he, threw the bo- and he threw the burning match in her face. Go to sleep, said Jeff as Nina's face began to catch fire. The flame started to spread around Nina's face. She screamed loudly. It was very painful to hear. She looked around, but Jeff disappeared. Nina collapsed on the floor. She saw her mother and brother quickly going downstairs. Both of them immediately saw a bucket of water. Wait, what? Both of them immediately used a bucket of water to pour out the fire. When the fire was on, when the fire on her face was gone, her mother called the ambulance. But a lot of neighbors came to their ho- house since they heard Nina screaming. And it's like what o'clock in the morning. Nina fell unconscious when they put her on the stretcher and she taken to the hos- taken to the ambulance, not the hospital, the ambulance. Among the neighbors, there was a boy that has a black hair, a pale skin, and has green eyes. His height is slightly thinner than Nina. The boy looked at her with some concern, but he didn't show, but he didn't how he can help her. The boy watched as they put Nina to the ambulance. (sighs) Fuck me, fuck me, fuck me. Nina woke up after being unconscious in the ambulance. She tried to move on her own, but the bandages prevented her from moving. I doubt. Suddenly, a nurse came with her mother and her little brother. It will be better if you stay still. You shouldn't move around, the nurse said. Her mother and her little brother came to her and encouraged her that it's it's going to be okay. After mo- Okay, whatever. After a month of recovery in the hospital, the doctor decided that it was okay to take off the bandages on her head. Her mother and her brother felt damn it her mother and little brother were anxious to see her face but luckily her face was kept intact with nothing intact and was not entirely damaged well miss nina the burns were not severe you will still have some on your you still had some of your facial structure including your nose but if the fire on your face kept burning your face will suffer a great damage the doctor said while removing the last bandage on her face when the last bandage was finally removed, Nina's mother was terrified that she saw while little brother was hiding behind her mother. What? What is it? Nina said while she was getting up for the hospital bed. She ran towards the bathroom and she, and she looked herself in the mirror. Her face. It was different from before. Her skin had turned completely white. Her hair used to reach to her knees, but now it's on her back. Ew. Her skin was very soft like a marshmallow. I don't think that's... No. Her family was very surprised at her face. Sister? Damn it. Sister, Chris said while hugging Nina. You still look beautiful as before, Chris said. But the child knew that he lied to his big sister because he actually felt afraid more than afraid for his sister's disturbing face. And also, he knew that his sister was going to be fucking psychotic. Oh, Chris, you're so nice. I mean, he tried to be nice. He said, well, looking at him in the way so disturbing, but I want to be more beautiful, Nina shouted. Nina's strange behavior confused her mother and little brother, but it also made the doctor f- confused at the girl's behavior. This face is perfect. Oh, my dear Jeff, you gave me this beautiful face, the girl continued shouting. Doctor, is my daughter okay? No! No! 
Nina's mother asked the doctor, Well, usually things go well after a lot of resting, but if her mental health doesn't improve, I'll give her a psycho I'll give her a psychotherapy. I'll just give her it. Make her take two two of these a day. Two of these a day. I understand, Nina's mother said. Nina's mother grabbed Chris's arm. We have to go now. Nina's mother said, Ha sure. Nina said, Well, looking at her face in the mirror. Okay. The nurse had her clothes, which is her purple hoodie with a short black skirt and her black stockings with red stripes. Excuse me. Nina dressed up and left the hospital. She went home with her family. She didn't know that she had become a monster that would kill anyone. Oh no. Like, didn't before? Okay. They came to the house and Nina kept smiling in a disturbing way. Then she noticed a boy in one of the windows in the house. He had a black hair. He he just had a black hair and has green eyes. The boy was watching her but very but her but he quickly disappeared. Is this who is this supposed to be? Like who is this kid supposed to be? Like for real. Is it supposed to if it's supposed to be Lou, then that's one thing. But who is this kid? <laughs> That night, Nina's mother woke up after hearing the sobbing of a girl. Her mother got, gets up from the bed, and she wanted to find the source of the loud noise she heard. She walked quietly and saw the door of her daughter's room was open. She went inside the room, and the room was very dark. She turned turned on the lights. Then Nina's mother saw something terrible at her daughter's room. Nina kept stabbing a lifeless body of a girl. She kept stabbing her with a knife while smiling. Her and Intestines and internal organs was removed and Nina put it on her bed. Her entire clothes were stained with blood. She was staring at the ceiling. You used to bully me at school, Nina said as she kept staring staring her eyes at the ceiling. Mommy, I'm becoming more beautiful, she exclaimed as she turned her head to her mother. Her face was very... Damn it. Her face was really bad. Her smile was shocking and her eyes were quite very wide open I got I get tired of getting worried I get tired of being sad and suffering all the time now I'll smile always and people will see my beautiful smile my beautiful face this is the face that that Jeff gave me I am my beautiful mama it's mommy whatever Nina asked her mother Nina's mother could not help but take a few steps back shaking her head no Nina you you become a monster You've killed someone. I Nina's mother started to run. Nina quickly followed her mother. Killing people when they run is funny. Oh shit, <laughs> that's actually that is a funny sentence. Nina said as she followed her mother. Nina's mother tried to run as at Chris's room. Just run at it. It's paper thin. Run at it to wake him up. But when she was just about to touch the knob of the door of his room, now they live in separate rooms. What the fuck? Nina quickly stabbed her mother's skull with a knife, and her mother fell immediately to the ground. I'm very, I'm very kind of sad that Mom does not believe I'm beautiful. How sad. Okay. Nina said while pulling the knife out of her mother's head. Chris woke up in his room. He felt he was in danger, and he was scared. Nina slowly opened the door, revealing, his sh- revealing her shadow. When Chris realized that it's, a si- at its sister, he took his sheets off to see his sister. But when she... But when she saw his sister is holding a knife, Chris became scared again, and he hugged his pillow. Chris, Nina said in a whispery tone. Then Nina asked her little brother a question. Am I beautiful? Nina asked him. Chris stayed quiet as he held onto his pillow. Oh, come on, Chris. I didn't do anything bad. She, she hides her hands in her back while crossing her fingers. It's a sign that Nina was lying to her little brother. No shit, honey. God damn it. Whatever. You know, I feel much more better now. Let's start a new life. Will you come with me? <coughs> Alabama. <coughs> Nina said she... Nina said as she gets closer to Chris, her little brother Chris nodded at her. Oh, good boy. If you want to join me, let's go to sleep, my prince. Nina kicked the front door of the house while carrying her little brother on her back. Chris was at... What? <laughs> What? Chris was dead. His dead body was smiling. That looked very innocent, but his eyes were wide. That make him look like still alive. But in reality, he's already dead. 
She was covered in blood in mul- she was covered in blood in multiple stab rooms. Nina took a few steps at the entrance and slowly looked at his little brother. Chris, I'll kill more people and make them all sleep. Nina said as she put her little brother in the ground. Then she walked away to the streets. <sighs> oh my god. Oh, oh my god. What? If you wanted your brother to be like you, you don't kill him. What the fuck? Oh, I'm, I'm so sad now. What? Poor Chris. <laughs>